Jo Khalifa is the tall building at the moment. I mean, you can do your research yeah. based on that. So what we're saying is now we establish that the crater, because we, at the beginning we talk about the cosmological argument, right? Yeah. So the cosmological argument is everything that you know of here must have a design or a crater. From your phone, we, we started from your phone. So someone made your phone, right? It didn't come by you, nothing. So we discovered who made your phone. The maker has, he's the one who will, who will uh, confirm that he made the phone, right? So later on, in com so the option you have now, I'll, I'll talk to you about cosmological argument. Do you mind if you've been recorded? So can I repeat what I was talking to you about? Okay, let's start from the beginning. So, so we, we talk about cosmological argument, right? So everything must have a designer. And the universe has to be created, right? So you had the three options. Did the universe came by nothing? That is the first question. So what, what, what was your answer? No, it doesn't come by nothing. Did it came by itself? No. no. So the third option you have is it must have a designer or maker. Yeah. It was a created, right? So, okay, so now we are on the same page. So what we're saying is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the universe. How, how do we know this? The Quran confirmed that. Allah is the one who designed, He is the one who is the maker. So we establish, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing Himself. There's the four chapters in the Quran, chapter 112. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were, ta were discussing about the concept of God, who, who the creator is. So you're agnostic, right? Uh, yeah. And I'm a Muslim. What's your name? Miles. Miles, nice to meet you, brother. Miles. So Miles here, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing himself in the Quran. There's the first chapter. He says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. He says, say God is one and only. Uh, God is communicating with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He's telling him to say, to say to people, to mankind, to everyone, that God is one, uniquely one. He ha because there can't be more than one God, otherwise we will fall into uh, reg infinity regression. More than one God. Once the, this creator wants to reign today and the other one wants to reign tomorrow, he will have a complex. So what we're saying, God is uniquely one. Allah is eternal, self-sufficient. He begets not, nor was he begotten. He does not have children or offspring. He's the first and last. He's the last and he is eternal. There's nothing comparable to God. We cannot compare God into anything, shape or form. So... So the question will be, so how does that sound? No, thank you, bro. Do you want to give him a drink? Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Give him a drink as well. That's fine. So we established the crater. Now I'll explain to you about who this crater is. The world is one. Does that make sense? That Allah is the one, the crater, who gave us life? I think so. So, if, so because uh, you, we established the crater, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us life. So Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ He created the death and life to test us which one is best indeed. So now this life, we have a free will and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. So what is the purpose of life, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I don't know if I have a, a solid answer, I don't know. Okay, you don't know. Okay, so I know as a Muslim, I followed the last uh, scripture that was sent to the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and that is the Quran. Quran, there's a chapter in the Quran, Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created a human being, that is a uh, human being is also a human being and jinns is different creation except to worship him. So, except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our purpose in life is to worship the creator, the one who created us, who fashioned us perfectly. So for instance, yeah, if I were to give you a million pounds and I say to you, yeah, take it as a gift, what would you say to me? I guess, thanks, I don't know. You will thank me, right? Yeah. But if I make it, if I give you a million pounds and I say, give me your two eyes, what would you say to me? I'd probably say no. Why? I like having my eyes. Because your eyes is precious, right? Yeah. 
So uh, what I would say to you is, why don't you be grateful to the one who gave you two eyes? And that is Allah who designed you. So because you already believe, we establish your agnostic, you believe in high power, you already believe in that. And uh, just like I mentioned earlier about the, when you buy a phone, right? In, you must have instruction, the booklet, as a manual to instruct you how to use your phone. So we say as a human being, we must have a guidance. And we say Quran has is a guidance to mankind that was sent to the last and final messenger, his Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. God has sent us prophets and messengers to different nations. And all of them came with one message, core message is God is one. Worship him alone. And uh, remember, I talked to you about uh, the, the truthfulness about Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of God. He was sent uh, to all mankind. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you of Prophet Muhammad except to the mercy to all mankind. And uh, so, so far we discussed about uh, the oneness of God, right? Yes. And uh, we discussed about uh, the purpose of life. Why are we here? Because if the Creator exists, so we should have a purpose in this life. We should worship Him. For instance, we worship Him because He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. And the worship is not just praying. I mean, it's part of praying. You can pray five times a day. Also, a worship is to do good in this life, to help others, to be kind to others, to feed the poor, to, to look after your elders, to be kind to your parents, give charity, give charity. also to, to do something that please God. I mean, that is a part of worship also. I mean, also, like I mentioned, if I were to give you a million pounds and I say to you, call me five times a day, would you call me? Yeah, probably. Definitely you would, yeah. man. Yeah, because why? It will change your whole life, right? Yeah. Because you can buy whatever car you want. If you want a Ferrari, or Lamborghini, yeah. or if you want a mansion, village, you can go on holiday, whatever you like. So what, so what are we saying is you have to be grateful to the one who gave your eyes, your heart. I mean, look at ourselves, we're a perfect design being. We have eyes, we have a nose next to our eyes, we have a mouth, we eat, we can smell. We have a veins actually, we have a DNA. You know, in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, we will know those a human being when they die by the, thing, by the uh, thumb of their fingers. And he's talking about our DNA. How did Prophet Muhammad knew this? I can show you the verse if you want. How did he know about the DNA? So we recently we came to discover about we have DNA. Yeah. And also in the Quran, Allah says in chapter 2, 163, it says, Your God is one God, there is no God but He. So, can I tell you about more about who this creator is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is sorry, the leaflet. Uh, so we will, uh, no, 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 sorry, no. this is a private, private discussion. conversation. Yeah, you mind? it's fine. Can we have a private no, we discussion? We have a history, so. I'm trying to learn a little bit, so yes. I don't know. I don't so, know. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I think it's, it's fine, you don't no, mind, it's fine. If, if the, uh, no, two sides to everything. No, I mean, I will speak to you later. Like, I'm, I'm like a. The side who I'm like tries a religious, to correct. I'm like a religious studies student, and I'm trying to get, like, the theology part of it, so. Good, good. This is, like, kind of important. Yeah. But thank you. Sure. That's fine, thank you. You don't mind. No, it's okay. Mind, Con yeah. Concentrate here. So in Allah, okay, it's fine. Thank you, brother. So Allah says in the Quran, is Allah, first of all, is the personal name of the Creator, the one who created everything and everyone. And uh, that He has to be a true God. Nothing okay. else can be called Allah. Because Allah, for instance, here, yeah, is the specific. Because if you say God, God has so many meanings, right? So God could be fem feminism. God could be Godfather. God, uh, you know, it has so many meanings. But we we say we say Allah because God says in chapter 112, say, "Kul who Allah had say Allah is one, uniquely one." So Allah is saying the term has no plural or gender, unlike the English word God. So God is one uniquely. This is the the concept of God in Islam. God has no partners, no equals, and no rivals. God has no father, mother, sons, or offspring or children. God alone is worthy of all our worship. Had there been more than one God, it would reflect deficiency and in his power or authority, uh, this would involve God having reverie. God is all powerful. God is all the most high. I'm just reading you about the concept of God. So there, there is nothing above or comparable to God. The, 
So for instance, God is all knowing, right? Right? Yeah. So what, how do you know? Because God has informed us in the Quran. We say Quran is the last revelation that was sent to all mankind. How do you know this? Allah says in the Quran in chapter 2. This is the Quran, yeah? Chapter 2. So this is the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 2. This is the book he's talking about, the Quran. About there is no doubt. There's no doubt in it. A guidance for those who are conscious of Allah. So it's like many people who are conscious, who are seeking the truth. Once the truth came to them, they will use their mind and establish the truth. So, and it says, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب في حدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون Who believe in the unseen. So we say this life is part of this. So you have to believe about unseen, the Creator, because if this life is a test, just like when you go, have you been to school, right? Yeah. So because you went to school or uni or, you, or college or university, you went there, if the teacher gives you all the, aside, all the answers before you go to the exams, yeah, that would be kind of silly. That would be silly, right? Yeah. Why would be silly? If you don't mind me asking. I mean, because right, like there's a purpose to that activity. Yes. That kind so, of so it took you how many years? For instance, maybe it would take you a few years to study, right? Yeah. When you go to uni or school, it takes you time to study. Yeah. So if the teacher will say you don't have to come to school, just take your answers. This is your qualification. Do whatever you want. Don't come. It's fine. That sounds silly, right? I mean, yeah. you're right. We're on the same page. Yeah. So what we're saying is, similar goes to Islamically. We say in Islam, this life is part of test. Allah says in the Quran, this is chapter... This uh, Allah says in the Quran, this life is part of test. In chapter in Surah Al-Mulk, yeah? So let me go to this uh, chapter. Look. Chapter chapter 67, verse 2. Uh, uh, Allah says in the Quran, Alladhi qalaq al mawta He created the, the death, wal hayata and life, liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amalan, wa huwa al aziz al ghafoor. He who created death and life to test you, to test a human being. Life. Which of you is best indeed? So it tests us when we die, we, because we're all guaranteed one day we're all going to die, right? And God is going to, to test us in this life. We have a free will. We can choose to do good and we can choose to do bad, right? I mean, if you choose to do good, it will benefit you in hereafter. But if you choose to deny God and to do certain things that God told you not to do, for instance, killing people is wrong because God in the Quran is commanding us not to kill or not to harm any son, innocent souls. And if someone does the good, he will be held accountable in hereafter. God is going to question them in hereafter. If someone steals someone's phone, is wrong because why you are breaking the command of God. So what we say in this life is that if someone decide not to worship the Creator in this life, and then he part, uh, and the message came to them, the Islam came to them, is being presented to them, and because they are arrogant or they follow their desires and they start worshiping other beside God, and they passed away, what do you think will happen? Because this life, the Creator will not come to you physically. Yeah. Why? Because this life, just like I mentioned earlier, this life is a test. We will be questioning here after. Yeah. So we have to pass the test in here after because in here after we will see the Creator, right? Yeah. So we will, just like I mentioned about college or uni, you have to pass your test and we will, we will get our result and we will see the Creator in here after. So this life, what I'm saying here, yeah, let's go back to the verse. Sure. Which of you is best in this? So now this life is we have been tested in certain different way. For instance here, yeah, God is telling you not to eat certain things and if someone try it, he's failing the test because the Creator has already told you, for instance, don't drink alcohol. And if God is saying in here after, you will be able to drink it. So you're part of test, right? Just like in college, when the teacher is teaching and, uh, and uh, for instance, you order KFC, McDonald's or KFC, and uh, he brought you in the table and you're eating it, what will your teacher say to you? Uh, it's not the place. It's not the, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's not the place. It's yeah. not the right time. He will kick you out from the class. 
right? Yeah. But you will say to them maybe, what is wrong with eating food? I'm hungry, the teacher, if you say to him. Yeah. He, will, he will get angry, he will still kick you out. He say, eat at break time or your lunch time. So what we say in this life, yeah, we're in this life, short period of time. One day we're all gonna die and we will be returning back to the Creator. Allah promised us in the Quran, I mean, all human being logic dictates we're all gonna die, right? Yeah. One day we're all gonna die. There's no doubt, there's no, there's no probability in that. We're all gonna die. And if we die, and if there is the Creator in there, and, we're, and he questioned us, did the message of Islam came to you, what would you respond to them? I mean, did the message of Islam reach you? Did someone advise you about Islam? Did someone uh, show you the information, the correct information of Islam, and you turn away? Would you be held accountable for that? I would guess so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, let me give you another analogy. Let's say I believe in the Creator, and you don't believe in Creator, yeah? We both, one day we passed away, we died. Yeah. And then we find out there is a Creator out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and He sent us uh, prophets and messengers to guide us, to show us the right path. And uh, it turns out to be true what I was telling you, the Creator exists. And He, by the way, He created the paradise and hellfire. The paradise is for those who believe and worship the Creator. And hellfire is for those who reject Islam, who reject the Creator, who reject the prophets and messengers. They will be punished. So we find out there is a paradise and there is a hellfire, right? And the other person doesn't believe in the Creator. So who will face the consequences? Thank you. I mean, yeah. say louder. I like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The well, person who doesn't, who doesn't believe. believe. Right. So, okay. So the atheist or someone doesn't believe in Creator will be facing consequences and they will be in hellfire, right? Yeah. But someone who prays to God and worship the right God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and follow the teaching of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. And um, they, we find out there isn't Creator, there is nothing, right? I mean, what have I got to lose? I guess that's true. Nothing, right? I guess so, yeah. So exactly. So my advice to you is you should worship the Creator. Okay. Don't, don't risk your life in here after because you already believe in high power, right? And you believe in Allah. I mentioned about uh, chapter 112, God is one and only. Do you believe in that? Say God is one and only. Yeah, it makes sense. So Allah is Samad, Allah is eternal. Do you believe in that? God has to be eternal, self-sufficient. I think, yeah. He begets not to know as he begotten. We cannot, uh, he doesn't have a children or offspring, or we cannot compare God into anything, shape or form. Do you agree? Yeah, I think that makes a lot. Of sense. There is nothing comparable to God. We cannot comprehend God shape into anything, shape or form. He is, he is like unto His creation. He is beyond our comprehension of understanding. So my question will be to you is, everything I've said to you, I've presented to you, you said you agree with me. So why don't you accept Islam? What's stopping you to become a Muslim? I think uh, just not knowing enough about it. Oh, okay. Much, yeah. So what about now I've been presented to you, uh, I've presented to you the message of Islam, and I'm calling you right now to Islam. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to keep keep finding out more about it. Okay. You know? So, okay, so do you want to find out, so, so far, have you re ever read the Quran? Uh, snippets. Snippets for class, yeah. You have read it, eh? Yeah, um, like the, the talking about hellfire and, and all that. Yes, that we read yeah. uh, in my class. Okay, and so you went to the highest, the 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 powerful message about the hellfire. Yeah, we were studying uh, wow, okay. eschatology. Yeah. yeah, so I mean personally, I don't like to carry people about the hellfire. Of course. I mean, I mean, it's the creator who will decide who will go to into hellfire and yeah. who will go into paradise. But my message to 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 you to or to everyone out there is is to worship the Creator alone. Yeah. He's onto like he's not a human being. He's not a monkey. He's not a statue. He is the one who created the heaven and the earth. For instance, in the Quran, it talks about this Creator. Yeah. If you go to the Quran. 
in the Quran, I mean the, the creator it says chapter chapter al yeah. Allah says in the Quran chapter 18 ver, chapter 18 start from verse 1 till 10 Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja All praise is due to Allah who has sent down upon his servant So we have Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him Allah is sending him the Quran So you have the two options now yeah Prophet Muhammad now uh, in here is he communicating with Allah or who is he communicating to? Is he speaking to God or is he is he making up things? This is the question. Well, the belief is like the, that the book is perfect, right? It's the perfect yes. uh, inscription from God. Yes. Okay, so right. what we're saying is chapter one, it says all praise is due up to Allah. So now from the Quran, if you read it, the you can see the description who this creator is and you can establish that prophet muhammad has to be truthful because he is communicating with the creator out there and he is against the devil by the way because the devil in the quran is being cursed many times i mean in the quran we've been told do not follow the footstep of the devil the devil will mislead you the devil the devil he disobey god's command because God, in the beginning, he created Adam, peace be upon him, and Eve. And uh, he told the angel to prostrate to Adam. But uh, all the angels prostrated to Adam because God, by God's will, God commanded the angel to prostrate to Adam. But all the angels did it, except Iblis. In the Quran, it says, except Iblis, because Iblis, or the Satan, he says, to to a God, a God command him to prostrate to Adam. He says, "Ana minhu khalaqtani You have created me from the smokeless fire. I'm better than human being because the human being were created from the clay. So there's arrogance in the devil, right? He, he disobeyed God and God kicked him out. And he told him, he he says, "I will mislead the human being." Now, when someone is print, for instance, yeah. When you see someone doing certain wrong stuff, he is following the footsteps of devil. Because God command the devil, uh, Iblis, Satan, to prostrate to Adam. And because we are the children of Adam, do you, did you know about this? Adam and Eve, the first yeah, human yeah. being. So all human beings came from Adam. He is, uh, he is the father to all mankind. So in the Quran in here, it says, All praise is due to Allah who has sent down upon his servant the book we can read together and okay. has not made there any difference. Divines. He has made it straight to one of severe punishment from him and to give good tidings to the believers who do righteous this, that they will have a good reward. Remember earlier I talked to you about the paradise and hell, here, yeah. hellfire, yes. about those who believe. Now in this verse he's talking about God has sent us prophets and messengers to warn us about hereafter. So this life is a test to give good tidings to the believers. So believers is someone who believe in Allah and all his prophets. So God is saying to them, give good, good tidings to the believers. <laughs> in which they will remain forever. Now God is saying to them, yeah, and to warn those who say Allah has taken a son. So I mentioned earlier about chapter 112, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, he begets not to know what he begotten. We say God does not have children. Now this verse is refuting Christian because they're the one who believe Jesus is the son of God or God incarnate or God the Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So because you're studying about compression, about the religion, yeah. so you need to know about uh, uh, the difference between Christianity and Islam. Yeah. And and Judaism, if you want, I don't mind because in Judaism law, there's only one God that they worship, right? But uh, in Christianity, later all people change in their religion, they start worshiping Jesus, they see him as God, as deity. And now God in the Quran is saying, do not say God as a children, is refuting them. So in the Quran, now God is saying in chapter, sorry, I mean, if you don't have the time, it's fine. 
I mean, uh, I've got a little more time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all done with my stuff for today. So okay. So and because this is normally, too. so in the Quran, it says that now God is praising those who believe in Islam, right? Those who yeah. believe in the monotheist. It says, chapter 23, verse one. Had aflah al muminun. God is saying this one. Successful indeed are the believers. Who are the believers? Is a Muslim. The the. What does Islam mean, by the way? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, you forget. So, forget. it's I fine. I can, I can tell you now. Islam means someone who submits his will to the Creator. We submit our will to the Creator because, for instance, we have to be grateful to the Creator. We have to be servant to the Creator because everyone is serving into something. When you go and apply to any job right now, you have to be servant to your employee. Why? Because if he told you to do certain things, you have to do it. If he tell you, if you, someone broke the glass on the floor, you have to pick up and clean it. I mean, it's part of the rules you have to follow. I mean, if you work in office, if there's no cleaner, you have to clean the table and present it well. So you have to be, so you are serving to your, in your workplace, right? So what I'm saying is don't be a servant to your creation, be servant to the creator. I mean, you can work in, in the workplace, you have to do your duty, but it's better to be servant to the Creator because the Creator is the one who gave you life. And one day we're all going to be returning to the Creator. So now here it says, successful indeed are the believers, those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who follow the guidance of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. He says, Alladheena hum fi salatim khashi'un. They who are during their prayer humbly submissive and they who turn away from ill speech. Now God is teaching you, stay away from the ill speech. They who guard their pri now God is telling you, that they who guard their private path. So there is so many things that God is telling us in the Quran to guide our private path, to be truthful to our parents, to be kind to others, to give charity. So in this chapter, if you read if you continue reading, it says, Alladheena rithoon al firdos on fiha qalidun. Who will inherit al firdos? Al firdos is the high paradise when we die. They will abide there eternally. So, what we're saying is, if uh, anyone, those who believe in the oneness of God, who submit their will and follow the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and uh, follow the teaching and we pray five times. You know, in Islam, we have five pillars of Islam. The first one is, we testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second pillar of Islam, we pray five times a day. The third one, we fast in the month of Ramadan. We pay the charity, the zakat. And, uh, and the fifth one is, is the hajj, those who can afford to go to hajj, pilgrimage. So what we said, if you fulfill the command of God Almighty, you will be promised paradise. Alhamdulillah. So this Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَالَّذِينَ رِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ Who will inherit al-firdos? They will abide there eternally. And certainly did we create a man from the extract of clay? So God is saying now in here how the human beings were created, right? In this another verse. Then we place him as a sperm drop in a firm lodging. So he's talking about embryology, about our parents, you know, our father and mother. So who could, how did Prophet Muhammad knew about this? About how? Yeah, right. So there's so many scientific fasts in the Quran, how a human being came into existence. For instance, yeah, for instance, so far, everything I've said to you, does that make sense? No. Uh, yeah. So, so do you believe in the oneness of God now? Yeah, I, 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 I don't. Are you sure? So. I, mean, I mean, everything I've explained to you already, you were agnostic, right? Yeah. You believe in the everything, okay. Everything, even your jacket has a purpose, your shoes has a purpose. Yeah. I mean, did you came by nothing? Right. So someone right. made the right, right. Zaino to wear it for you, even your bag has a purpose. For you yeah. to wear it to put your items. Did he came by nothing? By chance? By chance? No. So someone made it, right? Yeah. Someone created. So what we're saying is, did you, did someone made you or did you came by chance? 
that, that I was made. Right. So, okay, so now we establish. Remember at the beginning, I yes. say to you, you believe me, uh, I say to you at the beginning, yes, because you didn't know the concept of God and Islam, that's yeah. why you, you were born into uh, Jew, is a Jew, you said, yeah. Judaism. Yeah. But you didn't believe, maybe it didn't make sense yeah. for certain reason, or maybe, and then you fall into atheism. No, I mean you, you, you became agnostic because I say to you, many people are Christian because their parents are Christian. Many people are Jew because their parents are Jew. Many people are Muslim because their parents are Muslim. But in Islam, it says you have to ponder, you have to ask a question. In the Quran, it's not telling you certain things; it's telling you to question things. For instance, in the Quran. This is a chapter, let me, let me show you this chapter. Okay. In the Quran it says, Am khuliqu min khayri shayin, am humul khaliqun. So the, in the chapter, in the Quran, hold on, let me show you. So this is the first, in the Quran chapter 52, verse 35. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty is questioning you now. He says, أم خلق من خير شيء أم هم الخالقون أم خلق السماوات والأرض بل لا يوقنون وذي created out of nothing is question the human were you created by nothing or were they or were they themselves the creator did you create yourself now that is the question you said no right this is the question look this is the Quran by the way or did they create the heaven and the earth rather that they are no certain so did you create that they have? Yeah. How does that sound? I mean, no, I didn't. So you didn't create yourself yet? Right. Look, did you create the heaven and earth? No. So they, they, according to scientific, they say we don't know where the Big Bang came from. Why? Because they're not certain, right? I remember earlier I used co cosmological argument because the scientists, according to science, the Big Bang uh, came to existence. Why? Because there must be a designer, right? Someone created it, but the the scientists they know certain who that creator is. But the Quran it says they know certain. Remember now, yeah, we established the Quran is saying. So you, so now what we saying in Islam is there's something you convince, convince in your tongue and you believe in your heart. So far, what I established from you is you already believe in the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You already believe in it. It's just you need to convince in your with your tongue. There's two testimonies in the hadith, it says, convince with your tongue, believe in your heart. So you believe in the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And you believe if the creator exists, he sent us prophets and messenger, right? Yeah. And all those prophets, remember I mentioned about Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of God. He was sent to Wama Arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. Allah says in the Quran, we have not sent you a Prophet Muhammad except as a mercy to all mankind. And uh, his message is to call people to worship one God. That was his message. So you believe in the oneness of God, right? Yeah. And you believe they were prophets of God, right? So if you already believe in that, you already have Islamic belief. Yeah. So you already believe in it. You just need to say the testimony, that's it. Okay. So would you be able to say now? I mean, as it's laid out to me, yeah, I guess. Really? Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. No, I mean, I, you said yes, as right? As it's laid out to me, I would say yes. Okay, there's two sentences in Arabic and okay. English. Would you like to say? I don't know, I'm nervous. Because you already believe in your heart, yeah. right? Yeah. So you don't have to be nervous because you already believe in your heart, right? Yeah. If you believe in your heart, then you convince with your tongue. I mean, I mean, uh, why would you be nervous? Because because you already believe in your heart, right? It's nothing okay. that new. Sure, yeah. yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. I okay. just, I, I don't want okay. to... So there's two sentences. Kind of it's not even a big sure. statement. Okay. It's just two sentences. It's exactly what you believe. There's only one God, and Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of God. That's all. So, so but you have to say, repeat that? Yes. But, okay. So that will make you... Okay. Would you like to say in Arabic or in English? Uh, okay. I, yeah. I guess. In English? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so brother is am I forcing you to say it? No. Okay. So I testify. Can you repeat after me? You say Oh I testify. So this is testimony, it's called Shahada. You know about Shahada, right? Yeah, yeah. Shahada is testimony. okay. Yeah. So it means I testify. I testify. Hold on. I testify there is none worthy of worship. 
except Allah. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome to Islam, bro. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. So, so this, the oak. Good patience. So what happened is, brother, now all your previous sins are forgiven now. Okay. Now you're like a new baby. Okay. So what happened is, in previous, because the message of Islam didn't came to you, right? You're right. Yeah, but now I presented to you the message of Islam mm -hmm. and you have accepted. So God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Those who are truthful and those who are sincere, Allah will show them the path and will guide them. So Allah has guided you now to the truth. Now is you take step by step. What I say to you is now step by step. Yes, sir. You, you read them more because when you go to college or uni, you take your time to study, right? Yeah. So, and then uh, where do you study? From the, the college that you, because there's so many universities out there. But the one, they up, the one you applied, they will take you because you submit your application form and you study from there. So now what I'm saying to you is because you have accepted Islam, all your previous are forgiven now, anytime. Yeah. Right. So what I'm saying is all your previous sins are forgiven because your previous sins are forgiven now it's like your new baby so now you're sinless anytime you die now you're promised paradise remember at the beginning of discussion we established that if you die now because you're Muslim yeah Alhamdulillah you believe in the oneness of God and you believe all the prophets right if you die anytime now you're promised paradise Okay. This, I mean, something hope. You have the hope now of something good to happen to you. But before, you were not sure what if this, what if that. But now you're certain. I mean, you're not the only one who have accepted Islam. We have so many people like you have accepted Islam. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can go to our channel. It's continuous message foundation in there. Continuous message foundation or other channels like SF Dawa or other places uh, like the less united open half there's so many people who were like you who were questioning about islam and end up becoming muslim right yeah big why because islam logic dictate rationally it makes sense there's nothing to be uh not to accept about islam i mean everything it makes sense yeah so what i'm saying is all your previous sins are forgiven and now you're falling into the verse that i've shown you Remember earlier I showed you about those who are promised paradise is those who obey and call, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first one you testify there is none worth of worship except Allah, right? Yes. And Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah. You accepted that, right? So now because we have five pillars of Islam, you just like for instance when you learn how to drive, you pass your theory test. What will happen now? You practice, practice. Yeah, now it's time for practice yeah. for action. So if you want to, to be successful in here after, you have to practice. How do you practice the first system, the first pillar of Islam you have said there, by your tongue and you believe in your heart. Now you have to pray five times a day. That is the second pillar of Islam. How? You see many people are praising. Why? Because for instance, yeah, sometimes when you are ill, when First of all, God has commanded us to pray five times a day. It's our beneficial. When we praise, it brings us closer to the Creator. It brings us successful in hereafter. We are fallen because this life is a test. If it if, if is a test, then what will happen is God has to test us, right? Yeah. So God is telling us to pray five times a day and then we do it. We, I mean, what, will have, what have we got to lose if you pray five times a day? If we bring, first of all, we bring all the community together when we pray. Second thing is, when you pray, according to scientific, when you bend down, you know, some people, they're like, they do like yoga, you know yoga? They yeah. stretch their body, why? Because they feel good. But Islamically, we pray because we follow the duty. And the third one is, we fast in the month of Ramadan. 
Yeah. And uh, we pay the, we fast the month of Ramadan, we give the charity. I mean, uh, and the fifth one, unless you can afford to go to the Hajj, that one. I mean, if you can afford it, then you can go in there if you yeah. have work. But two things is important now, because you have accepted, I'm not gonna put you so much pressure onto you now. It's just Thanks. now take it easy, brother, yeah? Okay. Just, so I don't want to say, okay, because nothing, I mean, it will make you feel good because you have accepted Islam. How do you feel right now? Carry on. I listen, I listen. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It makes you like relief, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, because you know what happened, yeah? You now you all the previousness are forgiven now, alhamdulillah. So now you now you came into the right path. Yeah. Just like I said, the theory test you pass your theory test, now it's time for practice. I mean take your time. Just like if you're if you're going to Westfield, let's say you're going to Westfield, you have to take stairs. You have to go slowly. Yeah. I mean if you wanna take too much stairs to yeah. rush, you might fall down. Right. But you have to take step. I mean it takes time. I mean we have we have new rivers in there. We have accepted. Brother, can you get? Uh, I'll get you water. Would you like water? Okay. I'll get okay. you water. Yeah. Brother, I think I have to go kind of soon. It's fine. Anyway, right, thanks for your time. I'll give you water and certain things. But inshallah, you can contact me here every single week, and I will take your contact if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, we'll contact. We'll swap contact. Yeah, I'm not gonna be in the UK for very long, but okay, it's fine. No worries. But yeah, it's fine. We will continue. Uh, have a discussion and I'm ready uh, to teach you more about Islam. I'm willing to take you to the mosque to to introduce you to the brothers. I, I have been... Do you have a friend? So, uh, brother, can you get me drink, drink water? Yeah, I mean... Okay, here's... Yeah, I mean, here. you want me on the Okay, wait, I don't want to say... You want me to type it in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Yes, please, yeah. Wait, let me make sure it's right, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, I've been to a few, uh, I live in the U.S. and I've been to a few just as a religious studies student. Your name is Oh, I'm sorry. With my last name too, or? Yeah, it's fine, why okay, about I, I don't know how it's to fine, It's fine, it's fine. There you go. Okay. Thank you, brother. So okay. what happened is, I'm just going to write here uh, the... Oh, sorry. And, um, and what so can you, say, can you write again? Sorry. Oh, okay. And, and, and what was your name? My name is Sharif. Okay. Nurain. Sharif oh, Nurain. Sorry. Yes. Okay. 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 I, would say, I did want to ask you... Um, do you, do you know the, the biography of Malcolm X? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I read his his, his Hajj story. It's Hajj really, story. Yeah. yeah. Um, forgive me if this is inappropriate, it's but have you gone on a Hajj? Hajj, yeah. yes. Yes, I know about biography of uh, Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the nation of Islam, right? Yeah. Anyway, it's fine, we can talk about this later on. It's fine, brother, can you stop? 